At CES 2020, we get to see lots of different industries represented. We've seen concept cars, we've seen some fantastic autonomous vehicle technology. We've even had a ride in a hydrogen fuel cell range extended delivery vehicle. But I'm now here with Christoph, the CEO of EV Box. Yep. Uh, for those who don't know, EV Box is a an electric vehicle infrastructure company. I think yeah. that's how you'd yeah. like to, yeah. to reference Indeed. yourselves. Yeah. 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 So we are headquartered in, uh, in Amsterdam, Netherlands. That's where we started the business. In the last years, we also have started or I mean, further developed the business in the US. And uh, we're actually in the, um, in the phase of uh, completely building out uh, also a plant in uh, the Chicago area where we're going to do the local Made by America uh, uh, of uh, the production of the, of the charging station for the US market. So we have evolved a lot. I always say we have the unfair advantage yes. that we started the business in the Netherlands because the Netherlands is still one of the most developed EV charging countries worldwide where open standards have been created, where we work with smart connected systems since the early days in 2010, 2011, where we apply smart charging in big scale uh, so in, and in all, all type of uh, industries, residential, workplace, commercial, but also public and even uh, the corridor, fast charging across the highways, etc. Um, so we offer a total solution both hardware and also software. We have a sister company, Evron, that has a cloud management platform to manage everything when it comes to charging infrastructure. People are confused by, uh, by electric vehicle charging infrastructure in general. They view the, the charger as being something that they get with the car, the little box, uh, what we would call a granny lead. Yeah. Uh, other people term something called EVSE, which is a, a very common yeah. synonym yeah. in yeah in our industry, and again, a lot of people don't understand electric vehicle supply equipment, yeah. but that really encompasses everything, doesn't it? From, from domestic charging stations through to commercial charging yeah. stations through to fast charging stations. Yeah, indeed. And you are working in all of those we sectors. Offer all, we offer everything from AC to DC, from three up to 350 kilowatt. Uh, the total solution for the different segments, uh, and that on a global level, also towards fleets and even buses and, and beyond that. And I mean, your remark about the charge infrastructure and the fear about people, it's a little bit the chicken and the egg story. I mean, uh, and what you see, and that's, you see more and more indeed the, the adoption of electric vehicles and also the need of electric vehicle charging. But you have to know that 50% of charging is happening at home, mm -hmm. residential, so in homes, in, in MI, I mean, exactly. even apartments, yeah. condominiums, uh, and then also at workplace, commercial, and. The, the long distance uh, charging is more yeah, the limited. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I know from personal experience, I've been driving electric vehicles since 2006, Great. 2007. Wow, so you love it. I, I love it, I'm, I'm fully converted. We drove our crew here in, a, in an EV from Portland, so about a, a thousand miles to get here. It, it is quite a challenge for first timers to get their head around charging equipment. And one of the challenges obviously is understanding that they've purchased the car or they're renting the yeah. car, but then they have to get the charging station to get the best experience yeah. at home. Yeah. And a lot of people don't bother. Yeah. But what would you say to people who, who are wondering whether they should just deal with the lead that came with their car or go with a, a proper well, installed I, charging station I instead? think it's important. That, I mean, first of all, there should not be a fear because there's enough good equipment in the market available. You should be concerned about safety. That's the most important. And then secondly, the ease of use is super important. And that's why for the residential side, we have developed a solution that is actually it has two pieces. So you have an EV ready uh, uh, box that you can put on the wall that has to be installed by a certified installer to make it safe. And then afterwards, the customer can easily apply it himself and, and click the wall box into there. So it's really very convenient. So they easy, convenient, it. but safe. Uh -huh. That is the most important thing. And right. then you're good to go with all type of cars. There's no limitation. If it's a Tesla or a Kia or whatever, it doesn't matter. All type of cars can uh, easily work. And you that. can upgrade the unit yeah, with time absolutely. very easily. So it's totally future-proof and upgradable uh, depending on the type of car. Because if you start with a hybrid and later you convert to a full battery electric vehicle, so then it's upgradable, easy and, and uh, very easy to use. Now, one of the things that's, that's great about EV Box is it's, it's delivered more than 100,000 charging stations. Yeah, way beyond already. Yeah, yeah uh, around the world. Yeah. And you've started a very, I think, a very unique project yeah. that I want to talk to you about. It's one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you here today. You're planting a tree for every charging yeah. station that you install. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I mean, we are, we are um, a company with 500, I call them heroes, passionate people. We all have, I mean, uh, sustainability uh, uh, 
we live and breathe it every day. And so uh, besides building a successful business, it's also important to give something back to society. And um, so we actually decided that indeed we want to give back to society. And for every charging station that we install worldwide, we, will, we are planting trees. We also do that in, in uh, areas or regions that have been affected. For example, last year we planted trees in California and in Portugal, two areas where they were heavily affected uh, by the fires. We are doing it as we speak right now also in Australia. So we really want to bring back to society because we are concerned about, about uh, I mean, the, the adoption of it and we really want to uh, bring that in a positive message. Uh, also towards uh, a way of saying thank you to our customers that gave us the trust of the business and, um, and um, contributing in a positive way. What would you say as a closing question is the biggest challenge to the EV charging infrastructure? I know that as an, as an owner myself, and we hear from our viewers all the time, people worry about the differing networks, different charging networks, having different payment systems, people worrying about compatibility, whether a charging station actually has the correct plug for their vehicle. But I'm, I'm interested to hear what you as a, the industry professional thinks is the biggest hurdle to EV charging today. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good point. Um, let's let's look at the US. I mean, first of all, we have to make it very convenient and easy to charge for everybody, for every EV driver. So that's our main concern. And uh, we have been lucky that indeed the open standards have been created in Europe. And in the early days, we have created that interoperability and roaming with all the different players. So you can drive from Norway to, to Spain. And uh, with one single system, you can actually charge everywhere on every type of device, whatever the manufacturer or the network provider is. So that's also what we uh, have uh, worked out in, in the US now, where we are actually working on that. So um, we have, uh, re I mean, last year we have actually announced a partnership in interoperability roaming with ChargePoint so that our customers can charge on their network and vice versa. And we are also now implementing that with other players. So we are looking forward to announce more networks in the US so that we can actually make it very easy for all EV drivers across North America to charge everywhere whenever they want uh, with whatever type of device that they need. For their behavior. So that's really the biggest challenge, is to make yeah, sure that yeah, everybody yeah. plays nice. And it's as ubiquitous as it might be to fill an internal combustion engine. Well, I mean, we, we really believe that as a thought leader, I mean, uh, it's important that we, that we uh, move this industry forward in a positive way. And uh, together with, at the end, we are all on the same mission towards zero emission mobility. And so as an industry, we have to move forward in a positive way and make it very convenient for all users. Thank you very, very much You're for welcome. that. EVSE, Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. And it's great to hear from an industry professional on how he thinks the electric vehicle charging world is growing today. I'll be back soon with more great content from CES. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Keep evolving.